Abortion is murder. First Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 5 verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 26 verse 52. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again my sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Golden text, James chapter 2 verse 11. For he that said do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet, if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Brethren, it is not so easy to undertake the work of God, if you are unable to fast and pray. Even if you dance and sing all day long, if you do not know how to pray and you do not know how to fast, you cannot do the work of God. This is not the theme of our lesson which I want to reveal to you today. Thou shall not kill, Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. It is to bring to your knowledge that all the law and prophets handed down to us stand forever, though the world may pass away. For this reason you should not be misled by the fact that as long as Christ had shed his blood for the remission of sins that you have got a guarantee to commit any type of vice and you should know that, if you steal, you have transgressed and stand for judgment. He said, do not kill. If you kill on grounds that Christ had shed his blood for us, you are guilty of a serious offense. This applies to any form of killing, be it done with a matchet, gun, or even with a stick, by strangulation, starvation, drowning, tying a person to a stake or tree in the bush, until he gives up and dies, committing abortion or abetting in the act, simply, because the woman involved is in school. Both of you commit the same offense and you both suffer equal penalty. You who with an unwanted pregnancy go in for DNC, violation and curatage, commit the same offense as the one who kills with a gun or a matchet. Should you consult a medical doctor to terminate your pregnancy by means of an injection, you and your doctor are murderers. Should any person prescribe tablets to be taken in order to put an end to the fetus in your womb, you and the person making the prescription commit the same offense as the one who kills by strangulation. Should a native doctor give you any compound by means of enema in order to abort, your punishment is as heavy as that of a murderer, regardless of any excuses. Even if prayers are offered to you by a prophet in order to abort, both of you suffer, and you both stand before judgment. This is the means whereby every person has to save himself or herself. Maybe you do not want to use any of the aforementioned means to terminate a young embryo, and so you take to dry fasting. Because God knows your intention, if after days of dry fasting, the unwanted pregnancy is miscarried, you have committed abortion and you are in the same shoe with those who use tablets, injections or killed by strangulation. Equally, if you steal another's belongings, you are of equal yoke with the person who aborts by means of DNC, dry fasting, or one who bludgeons any person to death, or the one who kills another person by poisoning. He who defiles the bed of another man, or any woman who is intimate with another woman's husband commits the same offense as that of the murderer and a thief. All those who look at the opposite sex with lust have incidentally offended in spirit. Therefore whatever punishment those ones may receive, you too will have to suffer the same. A liar suffers the same punishment with a murderer, because he had inadvertently killed the person whom he deceived. There are many ways one can kill, one can kill by words or by the way one looks at someone. Those found guilty of such offenses suffer equal penalty with those that kill by gun or by abortion. By this you ought to understand that there are many ways to kill a rat. A rat could be killed by pouring hot water into the rat's hole or by thrusting a long iron rod into the hole, and the rat could also be killed with a stick. This is applicable to committing the sin of killing, by which any means can be applied. It is indeed a pity that you never attain the knowledge of these things. Did Moses not say that he who kills must be killed? Our Lord Jesus Christ on the other hand said he who is angry with brother is a murderer. When you are angry with your brother, you commit the same offense with the person who kills by poisoning, matcheting and abortion, and you consequently suffer the same punishment. He who abuses another person kills with words, that person who pronounces woe on you and your father, calls you insane, is equally committing murder. The person suffers the same punishment with those who kill by committing abortion through different means or with a gun or by poisoning, since all these methods point to the termination of life. You might, out of frustration, commit suicide. Your punishment is equal with a murderer, because you are one. 
Brethren, know that none of the law and the prophets shall pass away unfulfilled. It was because of this that Christ said, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18. A great many of you give thanks to God for not committing the sin of murder, but may I ask such people, if they have never told lies? You may claim, that you have never killed. But have you not stolen another person's property? Have you not committed adultery and fornication? Have you not indulged in concoction? Have you not committed and abetted in abortion? All you have to understand about God's commandments is that they are interwoven in such a way that, if you offend in any of them, you have to suffer the penalty which is death. If you tell lies, you kill, you commit abortion, you are angry, you have to die. The interwoven nature of the commandments. He that said do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. He who told you not to kill, did he tell you not to tell lies? He who said that you should not tell lies, did he not tell you to honor your father and mother, did he tell you not to fornicate, not to bear false witness against your neighbor, as well as not to have another god beside him? Is he not the one who tells you not to take the name of God in vain? I cannot understand why you do not conceive the intriguing case about the commandments of God that once you offend in one you offend in all and death awaits you as the penalty. For instance, the motive behind any war is to destroy life. Hence, no matter how brave a soldier is, even if he returns home with wealth of any kind but fails to present his commander with a man's head, he deserves neither honor nor praise. It does not mean that everybody murders, kills with guns and matchet, strangulates, commits abortion, tells lies, steals, commits adultery and fornication. But the fact is that the violation of one of these commandments brings untold hardship, diverse afflictions. They will not be saved by lifting up their two palms to the sky and calling on God as a witness that they have committed no serious offense like murder and stealing, with the exception of telling minor lies, being intimate with young girls and indulging in self-defense concoctions. But I am telling you that you have offended in all the laws because the so-called minor or minimal sins are equivalent to killing by gun and poisoning. For this reason, you have to suffer to the extent others suffer. You must be punished for they are all the same thing. After all you have heard that, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18. Yes, it is so, for none of the law and the prophets shall pass away, until they are fulfilled and judgment is executed. This is a mystery revealed. The wages of sin is death. It is often said that a thief or any offender should not be killed nor ill-treated. But you receive this with mixed feelings, because you feel, that, once offenders are set free, they would feel encouraged to sin and would go home rejoicing. That is a fallacy, because any person who commits an offense is already a dead person. All the commandments served, as instruments of judgment, do not steal. Do not commit adultery. Do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Have no other god but me, to mention but a few. Should you offend in one, you stand judgment. That is all. The law, as it is for the period of 100,000 years will execute its duty, and this continues forever. The law and the prophets will exist until when sin will no longer exist. He who commits sin is under the law. Some lament, since they remain in suffering and anguish after feast celebration and fasting. This is so, because you had already plunged yourself into sins and it is too late to get rid of them. Some people are of the opinion that after indulging in sin, they will confess their sins, but I tell you that it is too late, because once you sin, you must be punished. After you have committed adultery you make a confession. It is equally too late to escape the punishment, and this is why we have tribulations in the world. If our Lord Jesus Christ did not come to reveal all these things, then die and shed his precious blood on Calvary tree, you would have some excuse to commit sin. But on the cross he said, it is finished. John chapter 19 verse 30. This means that we must love one another, because it is for this cause he shed his blood, and then resurrected, yet the entire world continues to live in sin. Have they any excuse on judgment day? All those who do good are not under the law, because the law has no power over them, and as such they are free. It was for this reason that our Lord Jesus Christ said, A new law I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Sin is incompatible with righteousness. 
Whoever abstains from all sins is absolutely free from the law, and such a person is under grace. Our Lord Jesus Christ told the multitude that they should not think that he had anything against them. That Moses who was their father and who they profess to know will pass judgment unto them. He assured them that Moses bore witness about him for, if they had believed in Moses they could have believed in him. Therefore brethren, the doctrine of Moses brought judgment to all those who violate the law. The teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ brings grace and salvation to humanity. That is, why he teaches us not to commit sin, that we should love one another. Whosoever practices love is not under the law, because he is justified. Disseminate this gospel to the whole world. God commanded saying that you should not drink nor offer drinks to others. If you do not drink but you offer drinks to people you have committed an offense. Should you give drinks to others, you suffer from the same punishment, as those who kill by magic or gun, by lies, fornication and adultery, and by words. I want to make all of you understand that once you break any law, you have broken all the commandments. All the people who suffer and die do so because of the sins they have committed. You have heard, when the scripture says that you should not worship idols, as some of them did and died in thousands in one day. Let us not commit adultery, as some committed adultery and died 23,000 in one day. It further says that we should not tempt the Lord, as some of them did and they were destroyed by the serpent. The wages of sin is death. It said that we should not murmur against God, as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Do all these not prove to you that he who says that you should not commit adultery is the same person who says that you should not steal? If you do not commit adultery but you steal, you have violated the law. The law says honor your father and mother, and, he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Matthew chapter 15 verse 4. Alright, if you do not steal, you do not commit adultery but you speak evil words against your father and mother, you must die, because you are a law offender. Brethren, if you practice the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, by loving one another, you would no longer be under the law. The law will have no power over the person who practices the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, because he will not steal, hate fornicate, gossip, abuse, bully, commit abortion and he will consequently be free from the law. When you deceive, on the strength that our Lord Jesus Christ died and shed his blood for the remission of sins, you fornicate, live a lawless life, you are dead. Brethren, this is why you suffer diverse problems, tribulation, death and anguish in the world. Besides, since you are under law, you continue to sin. Let our first lesson be read. First Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 5 verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. When you say that our Lord Jesus Christ destroyed all the laws and the prophets, I want you to prove in the scriptures where he destroyed all the laws. Was our Lord Jesus Christ a fornicator or did he die so that you might commit abortion? Many people claim that they have never committed murder, but that they have only committed abortion three times. I am asking to know if a person who commits abortion has not committed murder, aiding and abetting evil. This revelation is for both the whites and the blacks that whoever prevents pregnancy in any of its ramifications commits murder and has to die. Whoever kills by the sword must also perish by the sword, therefore, if you kill by abortion, you must also die by abortion. Brethren this case of abortion is so lightly conceived hence so many girls confess they committed abortion while they were at school. I am assuring you that all of you who commit sin and other vices are before the judgment seat of God. Whoever abets abortion is a number one murderer, because they are like those hiring people to wage war on their behalf monthly. These have to import ammunitions to aid the hired people in their operation. In this case the importers, the exporters and those engaged in the war are all murderers, they have to suffer equal penalty. All the native and medical doctors who give out drugs and contraceptives for abortion are equally murderers. They all must be killed. Do you know the mission of the child in the womb that you have killed by abortion? Were it to be that your mother committed abortion, how would you have been in existence? If the mother of John the Baptist aborted, who would preach repentance? If Mary committed an abortion, how could salvation have come to us, who would have been a friend of sinners? Why are you afraid to kill with a gun and a matchet but you delight in committing abortion? One man one wife. Many allege that they do not commit adultery but they are married to so many wives. 
Do you know that the first woman is the wife approved by God for you? With all the others your affairs with them is adulterous. God has said that we should not commit adultery. Those who marry more than one wife have committed an offense. Thus, if you fall into the group of polygamists you have offended in all the commandments. Again the law says that, if you marry one and she divorces you, stay, as unmarried, and if you marry another wife you have committed adultery. If both of them feel like coming together then they should reconcile or remarry. If you leave your former partner to marry a new one, you commit adultery and you are condemned. A woman is free to marry another man, if the husband died so also the man, if his wife has died. Both must behave as children of God. Brethren, once you are married there is no separation or divorce. If conditions make it impossible for either the wife or the husband to continue with their marriage, then so long as the wife or husband lives, they must not marry another person otherwise they commit adultery. If either the man or the woman has a desire for intimacy, both of them must reconcile and come together again. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ, commenting on the statement that whoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication cause of her to commit adultery and whoever shall marry her that is divorced commits adultery. In order that you may practice the instructions of God, you must live up to the commandments that says do not commit adultery. Some people marry twenty wives yet pretend that they have never committed adultery, but I tell you that you have committed adultery with nineteen women. Those who marry two wives commit adultery with their second wives. Brethren, sickness and all afflictions come to us, because we break the commandments of God. You may, out of ignorance, say that such a commandment is no longer in existence, but I tell you that all the commandments of God must surely come to pass, even though you do not perceive it. The law of Moses is the judgment of the whole world. Therefore, it is very necessary for us to follow after the law of Christ in order to have life. Brethren it is my duty to reveal to you openly that God does not destroy any of the laws he has given. Christ came to confirm the law and the prophets. Christ is the Son of Man, Son of God and God himself. He spoke out himself saying, Think not that I am come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass one jot or title shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. If somebody advises you to marry, as many wives, as you like, commit abortion as often as you can, that Jesus by his death on the cross had abrogated such a commandment, that person leads you into eternal destruction. The person that encourages you to fornicate, commit adultery or abortion will suffer as a murderer. Go and preach to the whole world that they should not commit murder, in whatever form, for all result to killing. There are some women who do not want to be pregnant and therefore, when they become intimate with a man they would not allow the blood to pass into them, they have committed murder. Some women have some contraceptives which they take after sexual intercourse to prevent pregnancy. They have also committed murder. Such people must also face the judgment of God. Many women do not love a particular man but they are attracted by his money. And so once she becomes intimate with the man she will take some contraceptives to prevent pregnancy, such women have also committed murder. I would like to reveal to you the wrath of God upon people who commit all these vices. Some men become intimate with women but do not want their blood to pass into them, such men have also committed murder. They are going straight to hell. Murder in diversity. You all remember what happened to Judah and his children. The first son of Judah had a wife and he died and left her behind without an issue. Their father advised the second son to have affairs with his brother's wife in order to breed children into the family. I want to reveal to you the many ways of committing murder, I do not even talk of abortion. The second son felt that he should not allow his blood to pass into his brother's wife. For that reason he died on the spot, because he committed murder, because God has commanded saying, Go ye and multiply, but he did not want the multiplication to continue. If the second son of Judah who had affairs with his brother's wife and refused to allow his blood to pass into her died, what do you think will happen to a woman who is one or two months pregnant and then goes to abort? What will be her reward? It is certainly death. You who claim that you have never committed abortion, have you never wasted your blood on the ground to avoid pregnancy? Sometimes you say that you are a schoolgirl or that you do not want a child, but you go to procure a contraceptive device for yourself. The blood you stored and later destroy makes you commit murder. Brethren, this is not the gospel you should laugh at but rather you should be weeping. 
Born for this brings a toll suffering to humanity. Some girls or women go to a juju priest for charms and concoctions to prevent pregnancy, they have all committed murder. If our Lord Jesus Christ wanted to pass through the womb of a woman and come into this plane of manifest, all those who committed abortion or prevent pregnancies would have prevented him. This is the time when priests, prophets, angels, and saints of God pass through the wombs of women into the world, but you proceed to prevent them from coming to accomplish their assignment. By the time you waited to pass through the womb into the world, if you have been prevented, would you have come? The scriptures say that, woe unto a man who is the cause whereby his brother or sister stumbles and falls. Some girls or women who want to further their education go into the hospital for D and C, so that they may be free to commit adultery and fornication, as they like. This is murder and they will not live long enough to enjoy their education. Such women cannot stay by themselves as the Virgin Mary, they use D and C to prevent pregnancy. Note that your father, mother, friend or relation who advises you to go, for DNC is a murderer. Any judge who passes death sentence on any human being, no matter the nature of his offense is also a murderer. Anybody who kills must be killed. Why should you kill? Are you the one who created that person that you condemned to death? All the executioners are murderers. What are the causes of afflictions and tribulations in the world? It is, because we are all sinners. There is no witch, juju, or demon. Brethren, I have no fellowship with vices which I have enumerated to you. In order to have eternal life, you are advised in your own interest not to involve yourself in any of these vices. Let the second lesson be read. Second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 26 verse 52. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again my sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. He who commits murder is worthy of death. Brethren, have you heard the text read out to you? Our Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest teacher. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is the judge of the universe, of both the living and the dead, the good and the evil ones alike. In order that our Lord Jesus Christ may save Peter and you, he advised him to put his sword into his sheath, for all those who go with the sword perish by the sword. Why do you wage war against one another? Why do you hide in the bush to fire a gun at your brother or sister? Why do you poison food or drink for your neighbor? Why do you commit abortion or help to procure drugs for abortion? Do you know that both of you have committed murder and you must be killed? Why is it that you do not intend to go into the family way but you have affairs with a man? Later you commit abortion, therefore you must die, there is no need for you to live. What does the word of God say, that men should desist from argument, annoyance, anger and raise their holy hand in prayers to God? Women should not plait their hair or put on costly garments and gold for all these do not amount to the worshipping of the true God. It continues that women should submit to their husbands and a woman should not exercise power over a man. They should remain in silence before a man. For man was first created before a woman. And apart from that it is not a man that the snake deceived but a woman. That law was adjusted finally, when Paul said women shall be saved because of childbearing. If they will stay in peace and in love, then the question is with a woman who commits abortion what shall God use in saving her? Similarly, to a man who says that he would not allow his blood to pass into the uterus of the woman in order to prevent pregnancy, what shall God use to save such a man? Brethren do you see, how the whole world has gone astray, because even in the advanced nations of the world, they do not regard abortion as evil in the eyes of God. The scripture says that, as for a man who enters into the path of iniquity, Jehovah God and his Christ will allow him, since that path would lead him into destruction. The scripture say Ethiopia shall rise, this is the kingdom of God, therefore we must practice the word of God. The New Testament complements the Old Testament. When you come across a place, where these evils abound, preach this gospel, because it is the cause of tribulation in the world. Why do you decide to commit suicide, because by so doing, you have committed murder? When you shoot yourself and die, you have murdered or, when you take poison and die, you have also committed murder. Do you see, this is the reason why many people claim, that there is no God, because, if God existed, he would redeem you from problems. The reason is that they have broken all the laws of God, and as a result they suffer. Our Lord Jesus said, put your sword into its sheath, for whoever kills must be killed. 
people run to different hospitals, native doctors, pray and fast to solve their various problems. The question is have you not committed murder either by abortion or in whatever way or form you used to prevent pregnancy? If the whole world should pray together, so that God would take away this commandment, he will never heed such prayers until every jot of it is fulfilled. I thank God, because the Old and New Testaments are interwoven. The Old Testament stands for judgment, while the New Testament reveal only one God. Therefore brethren, we must be very careful, because, if we were to examine ourselves, we would not be judged. Have you examined yourself? The law says woe well unto any man who makes his brethren stumble and fall. If you put a woman in the family way and you later abandon her to suffer and because of such suffering, she commits abortion, you also share in the murder. Brethren, if you examine the amount of blood that comes out of a woman during abortion then you cannot say I have never shed blood. 99% of people who commit abortion die on the spot with the child. Tell the whole world to abandon all the instruments for killing, whether drugs, contraceptives or nuclear weapons. Refrain from fornication and adultery. You are told to refrain from adultery and fornication, because one sin breeds another. It is said, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels, and are the children of the resurrection. Matthew chapter 22 verses 30 and 31. Such human beings have not a tag of sin. Do you see why the children of resurrection cannot marry or give in marriage? All those who for the sake of the kingdom disassociate themselves from marriage and giving in marriage are free from the judgment of God. It is also said, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb with a silver he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Revelations chapter 14 verse 4. Why do you murder people with the words of your mouth? If you murder any person with your words, get it clear in your mind that you too will be murdered with the words of the mouth. If you murder someone with anger you should also expect same from another person. If you murder someone through abuses know that you will be murdered through abuses. If you also murder one through poison, know that you will be poisoned to death. Let all those who commit abortion know that they would, without any cause, find their stomachs protruding, and whatever they do to effect remedy will turn out to be detrimental. It is said, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covert, and if there be any other commandment that is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. All sins lead to death. If you sin against anybody you have murdered that person. If you backbite, lie against and look on one with an evil eye, know that you have committed murder and the repercussion is death. The word of God had clearly said, Whosoever hath his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. You say you have not committed abortion or fired a gun at any person and I ask whether you have not hated any person. If you have hated, you have murdered, then, you should die, for death is the repercussion for those who hate. People ask why a person baptized into Brotherhood of the Cross and Star should die and I ask does that person practice the actual teachings of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star? Have you not heard that whoever takes up the sword shall die by it? Now have your people not carried swords, guns, clubs, and other implements of war? Have you not used the words of your mouth to kill and have you not returned violence for violence? Now that you have given into vices, know that you are already dead. You should not commit abortion. Wealth, educational achievements, and power are not prerequisites for entry into brotherhood but love and adherence to the instructions of God. For this reason brotherhood should not commit abortion or carry the sword or gun and should not hate. Brotherhood has nothing to do with anything sinful. Brotherhood dwells in love. Do not drink. Brotherhood does not drink and does not give people drinks, because all these sinful acts lead to death. You all have seen this light, if one gives drinks to another or, if one drinks wine, that person has exposed himself to the danger of death. Because of this repercussion, brotherhood should not fornicate, commit adultery and abortion. These perfect teachings are what brotherhood has brought to both blacks and whites, and if they both can comply, it is good. But if not, let them continue in their evil acts and as long as they continue in sins, so will sins multiply.
Brethren, as I do not intend to take you further let us hear the golden text, and listen attentively you deaf and blind. Golden text, James chapter 2 verse 11. For he that said do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet, if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Brethren have you heard that? There is no begging in this matter, but blessed are those who hear the gospel and practice same. The Holy Spirit has come to redeem the entire world, it has not come to destroy the world. This was why our Lord Jesus Christ told Peter, when he drew his sword and smote off the ear of the servant of the high priest, put up again my sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. It is said evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You are told not to think evil of another person, because whatever evil you think of your neighbor, expect the same from another person. If one is made a commander, he will remain a commander, and if one kills by the sword, by the same sword shall such a person be slain. Many people are fond of saying that they do not worship men, but they only worship the real God. However, fortunately for brotherhood members and unfortunately for these other people, God has created man to rule over all other creations of his, and now I ask, what shall these people do? Adam was a man whom God destined to rule over heaven and earth, humanity, fishes in the water, animals in the bushes and birds of the air. Since it was destined for man to rule, whether the earth and heaven passes away, man must rule over all the creations of God. Man is destined to rule over other creations. Wherever you go to the spirit talks to you. Man fears his fellow human being, not the spirit. You always believe that people go to invoke the spirits of others and I ask, is it not a human being that invokes the spirit called snakes and instructs the thunder where to go? All these things happen by the instructions of man, and has this not shown you that it is man who is destined to rule God's creations? You who say that you will not worship man, should get this clear in your mind that you are already perished. These set of people are very unfortunate. The Pope, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the King, Prime Minister, President are all men but other men pay obeisance to them and yet they say they would not worship man. Brethren have you seen how the foolishness of man is revealed? Have you seen why those people who resist the rulership of the ones placed at the head suffer? When you are subjected to a governor, permanent secretary or commissioner, you resist him, because you say he is a human being like you, and when you are subjected to punishment you call on God. You should suffer, since you do not want him to exercise his authority over you. Do you know, that God has placed these people there to head these positions? Mermaid, Juju, witches and wizards are men and God has placed them in their positions to effect a purpose of his creations. Honor all men. You complain that you are hated by the village head, and at your place of work, but this is so, because you are one of those people who say you will never worship man. Since God had placed that person to be your head at the workplace, he has authority over you, and whenever you disobey him and he endorses your record adversely, you abuse him, the abuse goes to you first for disobeying and not respecting him as your head. Angels serve under man. All angels are under the command of man, no matter the size of the angel. The angel Gabriel is under the command of man, and let this be clear to you that angels are meant to serve, even if they have twenty heads. Even if you see rocks bearing twenty faces or trees with twenty heads, do not be moved, for it is man who is to use them, as he likes, but let man stay in his foolishness and say that he will not worship a man of his own caliber. You can now see, that the promise of God is true forever, and since God has destined man to rule his creations, it must be so forever, in spite of the sinfulness of man. Since God had also instructed that man should not commit murder, it must remain so, and if you commit murder, there will be no forgiveness, for you must pay the price by being murdered too. If humanity had known God and his laws, they would not have murdered with swords, guns, drugs, evil occurrences and through abortion also. Of the Ten Commandments, six of them belong to man and four belong to God. Honor your father and mother and I ask, who is my mother and father? Is it not man who is my father and mother? Do not steal. Is it not said also that you must not cause one's depression? For, if you cause one a depression you have murdered him. Do not commit adultery with another person's wife or husband, and if anyone commits this act, he or she has committed murder. Do not bear false witness, and if you say that one has severed another's head, when he only got annoyed with this fellow man, you have committed murder. 
do not covert, and if you kill your neighbor's goat, you have exposed yourself to sickness, the judgment of God. You will now see, that, wherever you go to, man remains the head, even in the thick forest and in the waters. But man continues to be treacherous to his fellow man, by saying he will send snakes, thunder and other things to kill his fellow man. Are they not men like you? They are your fellow men. Man is a mermaid, juju, thunder and you still say that you do not value man. Now how do you come by life, since you are a murderer and a transgressor of the law? The word of God stands forever. You can now see, that heaven and earth will pass away but not one jot of the laws and the prophets will pass away until all are fulfilled. Those who have no law will die, if they offend the law and also those who know the law and do not abide by it, that same law shall be used in judging them. If you are a driver and you drive wrongly through a one-way street, and when you are caught, you plead ignorance as your excuse, that does not save you. Ignorance is no plea in the court of justice. Since you have offended the law, you are liable to the stipulated fine. That fine will teach you a lesson. It is good for humanity to observe implicitly the commandments of God. You should not underrate any of God's commandments. As long as you live, he lives also, and his commandments also will continue to affect their duties. You will be devoid of problems, if you observe the Ten Commandments of God. As I do not intend to be tedious unto you, one stroke of the king is enough for the wise, let those who have ears to hear the word of God and let God bless his holy word. Amen. Thank you Father.